Italian TGT, general excitement, you know, joining some Auburn brothers. Uh, go ahead. I'm just very excited to be able to be a part of this team, be, a, be able to um, see my old teammates, play with my old teammates, as well as play with these new guys. I mean, there's money on the line, so it's, it's, it's just exciting, and um, I can't wait to be out here and play. Tell us a little bit about the team, obviously the Auburn guys that you're playing with, but some of the other guys on the team as well, for people who may not know. Our team, like, we, we just got a great team, a team full of guys that want to share the ball, score the ball, um, play defense. We just got a team full of dogs. Like, um, every guy out here, everybody that gets on that court is going to be ready to compete, ready to go as hard as they can, and ready to win this money. So that's the main thing. Tell us about life inside of, of TBT, um, sort of the testing process, just kind of the, you know, the safety protocols, and, and just generally what you've been doing to pass the time outside of you know, practice time. Well, one thing I can say is they're definitely taking a lot of precaution. Um, we have tests every day. Um, we can't do too much. We can't go outside of the hotel. Um, so I'm guessing everybody in the hotel is, is tested negative on every test because um, we have tests every day. And, um, I mean, we all get together as much as we can to play some video games with the team, uh, try to get some chemistry, try to get to know each other. But um, other than that, I mean, we – in a bubble, we're in our rooms, and we're not getting out nowhere. Uh, having the opportunity to, to represent Auburn again, to play with Bryce, to play with Horace, uh, you know, how much does it mean to you to, to represent you know, those guys as well as the university? It means a lot. I haven't seen these guys in forever. So to be able to get on the court with them again and um, shoot for um, winning this whole thing is um, amazing. And then as well as playing with the new guys, I played with some of them last year, and just to be able to play with um, – Everybody on the court, as well as my old teammates, it's just going to be a fun experience. What has the support from Auburn fans been like thus far? The Auburn fans have been great. I mean, it wasn't any surprise because, I mean, when I was playing there, I know how the fans were. Um, so the fan support is great, amazing, and I knew it was going to be like that. So it's not too much of a surprise. First question here from Andrew Kesey. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, hey, Deshaun, uh, last year this team was called, you know, Tampa 2020, and now it's obviously, it's for obvious reasons, been changed to War Tampa, kind of a play on the War Eagle. Were you behind that push? And if not, do you know who was? And, you know, can you just talk about, uh, you know, the, the change to, from, from Tampa 2020 to War Tampa? I wasn't much behind that push, but I, it was definitely a great, um, great change because the Auburn fan base and um, being able to get that fan base was um, – big in um, being able to make the uh, TBT this year. And uh, I would say it was probably more behind LaRon and Matt, um, the change, but I'm not really sure exactly who it was, but it was a great move, smart move. Andrew, any other questions? Uh, no, that's it for now. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to raise your hand uh, and we'll get to everyone as quick as we can. Uh, Deshaun, you guys have had some, some practice time. Uh, I think a couple guys got together in Florida. Talk about the, the chemistry of the team and, and how things have been going as you prepare for your first game on Saturday. The chemistry has definitely been coming together. Um, all of our practice, we've been able to get some scrimmaging going because that's what's going to build this chemistry and that's what's going to build. Um, that's what's going to um, show each person how each person plays, like, and that's what we need. So we've been getting able, being able to get on the court, get a lot of – um, five on five, a lot of drills, a lot of skill work. So that's what we've mainly been doing, just um, trying to build some chemistry. And it's, it's all coming together well, in my opinion. Have you looked at House of Pain at all, the guys in the team? What do you think of, of the matchup you guys have? Uh, we've looked up, uh, we've, we looked at a little bit of their um, um, roster. Not too much, but, I mean, it's going to be another game. It's going to be a game out here. It's not going to be any fans. So everybody's going to have to come and play, like, because – the fan base, that, that it's going to mess with a lot of people, but there's no fans. So, I mean, everybody's just going to have to come play and be ready to play every game. Another question here from Jason Caldwell. Go ahead, Jason. Sorry. Jason. Now I'm here, yeah. What, what did it mean for you to, to watch those guys make that run to the Final Four and to see them kind of doing those things? What would that mean to you having played with those guys before? It meant a lot. It meant a lot to be able to watch those guys out there and be a part of the Auburn family and know I was a part of the Auburn family. And I got I got this great team to cheer for. My team's in the Final Four, 
And, and seeing these guys with so much success and seeing their faces, how happy they were, it was just great to be a, um, a part of that, even though I was watching. It was great. Thanks, man. Next question here from Patrick Graham. Go ahead, Patrick. Hey, Mick. Um, quick question. Do you feel any type of extra pressure going into the weekend, knowing that the sports world's kind of uh, – Nothing's happening. There might be extra viewers going into the weekend. Is there any type of pressure going into that? I mean, the only pressure is to go ahead and get this dub. Go in here, um, compete, and go get this win. Like It's just like any other game. It's not going to be any fans. Everybody's going to be watching. I mean, it's just like any other game. Go out there, compete, and win the game. Execute. Same game plan. Patrick, any follow-up? No, thank you. Next question here from Justin Lee. Go ahead, Justin. Hey, Deshaun. Just kind of like what he was asking, do you also see an opportunity, you know, with with everyone watching and, and kind of unique circumstances? Do you see an opportunity to show out and, and uh, you know, I don't know, make a name and, uh, you know, show out? It's definitely an opportunity. It's a big opportunity. Like, the stage, the um, the competition, um, the teammates, is, it's definitely going to be a lot of people watching these games. So it's definitely always an opportunity to get out there on the court and show something new or show something that you can do. And definitely uh, opportunity to go out here and um, kill, like you said, and maybe get some new interest. It's definitely an opportunity. There's no way it can't be. Okay, next question here from Josh. Go ahead, Josh. Hey, Sean. Um, I know you. I know you played with Bryce and Horace on uh, that 2016 season with Auburn. Did you ever think that you'd get the, the chance to play with them again? And how cool is it to have this opportunity to to be their teammate again a few years later? No, it's great. I mean, I, I wasn't really sure if I'd ever get the opportunity to play with these guys again, but to be able to have this opportunity to play with my guys and be able to get back on the court and win some games. It's, a, it's definitely amazing. Definitely. Thank you. And another question here from Andrew. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, just wanted to know what you guys are kind of build, or uh, Deshaun, rather, you guys are built on a, uh, as a, a mixture of Auburn guys and Florida guys. Has there been kind of like a friendly rivalry between the Auburn and Florida guys or anything like that going on in the, in the oh, um, early stages of all this? Definitely a rivalry. I would say more between – Everybody, because everybody wants a position. Everybody's trying to get out there and show what they got. Everybody's trying to get out there and compete. Everybody wants that game-winning shot. So it's, it's definitely um, guys out there competing. And that's only going to make everything better, though, because it's guys out there competing. But it's, it's all love, though, at the end of the day. We all know we're teammates, and we all know we're out there to get each other better. And um, competing is the best way to do that. Take another question or two here for Deshaun, if there are any left before we move on to, to Bryce Brown. Deshaun, any uh, final parting thoughts here? Uh, you know, what Auburn fans can look forward to or you know, any uh, anything that they can expect to see from you guys on Saturday? Uh, the Auburn fan, I can definitely let you know you you go, you can look forward to, uh, to a show. It's gonna be it's definitely gonna be a show out there, and it's gonna be it's gonna be great. You guys gonna love it. And we're eagle. We're Tampa. Let's go. All right, Deshaun, thank you for your time. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. We will bring on Bryce Brown on the <laughs>
Joining us now, we have Bryce Brown, uh, obviously of Auburn, of the Auburn Final Four team. Uh, Bryce, if you could just tell us how this team came together with, with your involvement and how excited you are to, to play in TBT for the first time. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I had this, this large role in putting the team together, but um, I know I kind of like, you know, influenced a couple teammates um, when I joined, kind of influenced uh, other people, other guys. Um, to join once they seen that uh, that that um, I would I would join. So I, mean, I just wanted to, to take an initial step and let them let them work temper know that um, I was down from the beginning, and um, and you know just trying to say I was all in from the beginning. Yep. Got a question here from Justin Lee. Go ahead, Justin. Bryce, just I'll open it up with you know what's it like being in that hotel? I mean, does it feel like AAU again? You know, maybe no fans playing. I don't know. Does it does it feel like you're a kid again? What's it like in there and and playing this tournament? Um, it, it's yeah, it has a little AAU feeling. Um, but I, I can tell you this: in AAU, I wasn't uh, a million dollars wasn't a prize. So, um, you know, it's 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 much a much better feeling, a, a bigger feeling. Um, um, sense of urgency you have to go about it um you know we only have a few days to get prepared for our first game um you know we're, we're playing high level competition night in night out so i mean we're just trying to um, start off with a win on, on saturday and, and, and try to get things rolling from there thanks Bryce. next question from nathan king go ahead nathan Hey, Bryce. Hey, I remember after the Final Four, the last time we talked to you at Auburn, you talked about, obviously, your number one goal was to make it to the league, to make a G League team or something like that. Obviously, you did that and you were one of, you know, you made a splash in the G League last year. After this TBT thing is over, what, is, what does that next step look for you, look like for you with the G League next year, with the NBA next year, um, trying to get prepared for that? What, what kind of your next steps look like? Yeah, I mean, I was actually currently working out because um, I didn't I didn't know if I was going to get a call. It was going I potentially could have got a call for an NBA team through that transaction window that happened on the twenty third. So at the same time of preparing for this tournament, I was preparing for potentially getting called by an NBA team just because my agent wanted me to be on standby. Um, but after this, after this is over with, um, you know, just just from here and talk to I me, mean, I. I I should have opportunity, but you know, if things aren't aren't guaranteed, things aren't hundred percent. So after the season I'm you know, I'm just gonna continue training, continue staying in shape and just hoping hopefully something opens up. Um and I feel pretty confident that um I put myself in a good position. So um, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna use this as, you know, just trying to you know, I'm mean, definitely use it as an opportunity to showcase my talents, just like um, I'm pretty sure everybody else is, but you know, um for the most part, I feel comfortable where I'm at, and um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to try and go out here and win and um, try to get this million. For you, being a guy that's got now NBA G League experience, what was kind of the number one thing you learned from that this last year? Um, obviously, getting to score a lot and getting to play a lot. What was kind of the, the number one thing you learned that's going to help you in your career, and also what could might help you um, in this tournament? Man, I think I think the G League helped me out so much last year. Just um, just thinking the game. You know, I was around when I was around the Celtics last year before I was sent to the G League and everything. Um, you know, it got the the how smart guys play. You know, the guys aren't the fastest at that level, but how how they just they think everything through. They um, they 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 make certain reads. And my my biggest thing was just making making the right play. You know, I don't have to be this super play. I'm a Big time shooter, and I understand that I know my role. But I don't have to be this super playmaker. I just have to make the right plays, and that's what they want to see. They want to see guys making the right plays. They don't want to see you necessarily, you know, want to do all these dribble moves and and um, you know, see you jack up a shot. That's not what they. They want to see if, if that's the right play. If it's five seconds on the clock and it's time to do that, then that's when you do that. But for the most part, it's all reading. It's all making the right plays, and that's really I've try to use that in the G League, and I try, I try to transfer that to um, playing with my guys in TBT and my, when I go home for open gyms as well. Appreciate it, Bryce. Next question here from Jason Caldwell. Go ahead, Jason. Bryce, hey, man, uh, when when you look at the opportunity, you mentioned, yeah, there's, there's money on the line, but knowing how many people will be watching, how many eyes will be on this, is it a little extra motivation knowing that, man, this is an opportunity to, to showcase my skills that maybe a lot of guys aren't having right now? 
Right. I mean, like you said, it's definitely opportunity. Um, but you know, I feel like at, this, at these times, you know, you still want to stay with, stay within yourself because you know there are a lot of people watching. And, you know, you want to stay doing what you're doing. I don't. I'm not a big believer. I, I don't. I really just like when people, you know, when they see their uh, ESPN game or you know they want to try, you know, sh- try to do do too much at times. And um, you know, that's not what I'm about, and that's not what I'm planning on doing. I know that's why I'm kind of glad about the team I have. I'm very familiar with the guys, and you know, we're gonna play. We're gonna play a good team ball. And, you know, we we've already talked about it. We have good chemistry, and you know, we have people that can shoot. We have we have a bunch of killers like Deshaun said. Yeah, because of that, that familiarity, how much does that help this this transition into getting ready to play that you're so familiar with a lot of guys on this team already? I mean, it helps so much just because, um, you know, I know we have. They, they're they familiar with me. I'm familiar with them. And um, like I said, we, we're just trying to, like, these next few days, it's important that we um, continue to build on our chemistry and continue to sharpen things because um, it's not that big of a window that we can prepare for. So, um, um, we're just trying, going, like you said, just going to try and use those things. Yeah, one more quick one. Who's somebody that the Auburn fans aren't familiar with that they're going to really be impressed with when you guys take the court? That they're not familiar with. Um, I mean, everybody's probably familiar with Fletcher, but I mean, and he's going to, he's going, he's definitely going to do his thing. But if I had to, if I had to pick another guy, it'll probably be um. I would say, I would say, Scotty is a, is a big piece. Super athletic, freakish athletic with a can pop, um, shoot the pop three. Um, you know, he he would he would kind of remind me of a of a Auburn player that Coach Pearl probably would have recruited just because of his athleticism and um, he could shoot the ball. So um, you know, he will he will, he fits our, our style of play really well. I would say. Next question here from Gianna. Go ahead, Gianna. Hi, I was just wondering if you have talked to any of the guys from this year's team since their season was cut short, and how does it feel to kind of be the next Auburn basketball to play since that moment. I'm, so, I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? Have you talked to any of the guys um, from this year's team since the season was cut short? And then how does it feel to be the next kind of Auburn basketball to play since that season was cut? Have I talked to my G League teammates, you're saying? Auburn. Yeah, oh, have I talked to Marvin guys? Oh, yeah. Um, since the season, yeah, I, I've communicated with them because I've actually had some guys that were um, – that are actually in the, involved in the draft process right now, and they're trying to, you know, kind of ask me what things to look forward to. Um, guys like Samir, Austin, um, I've, I've kept in contact with them just, just because they want to know how the draft process is going to be. And I, I've just, you know, tried to inform them as much as I could. And then the other part of the question was, how does it feel knowing that you guys are kind of, as War Tampa, the next Auburn team to play since then? Like, is there any sort of sense that um, you guys kind of get to pick up for the fans since their season was cut short? Right. And yeah, it'll, it'll be it'll be it'll be kind of weird just because you know we we're, we we are an Auburn alumni team, but we're not the Auburn team anymore. So I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see how. Um, they react to, you know, cheering for the Auburn team to go and cheering for a war temper team. It will be interesting. Um, I know we've gotten a lot of support so far. Um, and I know it will keep growing because um, we have so many guys like Deshaun, Horace, and LeRon who've all had impact on um, teams where we got to the um, um, tournament for the first time in I don't know how many years. And then me and Horace, when we um, had the impact on that team with the Final Four. So I know the Auburn team, Auburn family would be proud and can't wait to see us. Thank you. Next question here from Andrew. Kesey, go ahead, Andrew. Hey, Bryce. Uh, were you behind the push to change the team name from Tampa 2020 to War Tampa? And if so, what does it mean to play, again, under, you know, the concept of War Eagle, but also, you know, with a, a new team that you're with now in, in, in a, a, a Tampa-based team? Yeah, um, you know, I, I'm not going to take credit for saying I came with the word temper name. I didn't, but I, like I like Deshaun said, I thought it was a really good idea um, combining, you know, the team from last year with um, a part of the Auburn War Eagle name. And, um, you know, I was always all behind it once they once they told me. So, you know, I didn't have any complaints about it. And what was your second question? Oh, that was pretty much it. I was kind of, I was kind of long-winded, and that was my fault. Yeah, you, you answered it. Sorry. All right, next question here from Justin Lee. 
Hey, Bryce, just want to ask you more about Fletcher. Um, what's the, what do you think it's going to be like to play with him? I mean, I know you're used to being the, the best sharp shooter on your team. And uh, what's it like to kind of have two of you? You know, what's going to be like to play with him? Oh, it's going to be incredible. Like, I, I feel like me and Fletcher chemistry has already been good um, as of recent. You know, I've just, just met a couple of days ago. But, um, um, you know, he's an outstanding shooter. can shoot it from anywhere, off balance, on balance. It doesn't, doesn't even matter. Hand in the space. Um, and no, I'm a, I'm a similar guy, and um, you know it's, it'll be tough to, it'll be it's gonna be very very tough to to kind of, I, I feel like uh, to stop both of us on the wings, and we have a, another good we have a good point guard and, and Taylor who, who who does a good job of finding um, finding us and, and when, when we want the ball. So um, it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting now that I have um, another shooter on on that wing. Uh, next question here from Patrick Graham. Go ahead, Patrick. Uh, looking ahead, you guys, the second round matchup, if you get by the first round, you got the defending champion, Carmen Screw. Do you find an advantage to get a game under your belt um, before taking the floor against them? Yeah, I, I actually, that's, you know, I, I actually um, enjoy having that first game just because it, it allows us to get used to the balls, get used to the goals, um, get used to where we're playing at. And um, so I wasn't, I wasn't really disappointed that we had to play a game before we got to them. I really actually, um, you know, rather that. Um, so that I, we have a full game on our belt with team chemistry and, um, you know, They'll, they'll be slightly more winning. I, I've experienced they'll be slightly more winning just because they're coming off of not playing and we're coming off of playing. So, um, you know, it'll be a couple of days in between that. But I, I'm really excited to hopefully play in the Harmon's crew. So, um, but of course, we can't look past the first game. Um, um, and so, you know, we're just going to take one game at a time. Right. Thank you. Last couple of questions here before we let Bryce go and bring on Horace Spencer. Uh, another question here from Andrew. Go ahead, Andrew. Bryce, you guys are billed as a, a mixture of Auburn and Florida guys. Um, was there a, a same same thing that I asked uh, um, Deshaun? Is, has there been kind of a, a was there a, in the early days a rivalry between some of the Florida guys and the Auburn guys? A friendly, of course, because you guys are on the same team, but a rivalry nonetheless. Yeah, you know, people people go and talk. They they talk. You know, we, we talk. I talk. They talk. They talk. Um, just, just, just competitive nature. At the end of the day, we want to compete, and like I said, that's one thing I like about my team is when we, get, when we're, when we've been scrimmaging the past few days, we're competing, we're going at it. It's, you know, we're trying, like you said, we're trying to win, pushing each other. So I mean, of course, it's definitely um, a, a competitive nature right there. All right, last question here from Jake Weiss. Go ahead, Jake. Hey, Bryce. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, you talked about support from the Auburn family. Uh, have you heard from any of the uh, Auburn coaching staff uh, during this time? Yeah, all, all the time. I, I talk to the coaches all the time. They keep in contact with me. Um, I've actually talked to Coach Pearl no longer than probably a week ago, probably about three or four days ago. Um, Coach Flanagan, one of the assistant coaches, I talked to him about maybe two weeks ago. Uh, but, yeah, for the most part, I keep, we keep in, coaches do a good job keeping in contact with me and and I'll do the same. <clears throat> All right, Bryce, any uh, parting thoughts here before we let you go? Um, just just to look out like a science, to look out for a show. We're going to try and put on one. We're going to shoot a lot of threes, so it's going to be very similar to Auburn basketball. Um, we're going to play hard. We're going to play hard, and, you know, that's – one through five, guys play hard. And, you know, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't play hard, you're not going to win. And that's, a, that's always how I thought. So, look forward to playing hard and making a lot of shots. Bryce, thank you. We'll bring on more special on the two.
All right, we're now joined by Ford Spencer. Like I said, obviously of Auburn, Final Four team, former teammate of Bryce Brown and Deshaun Murray. Uh, Horace, any opening thoughts on, on playing in CBT for the first time? You know, I'm just excited to be here, you know what I'm saying? It's my first time being a part of this tournament, and it's a big stage right now with everybody watching. So I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be a part of the team. I'm just ready to work. Question here from Justin Lee. Go ahead, Justin. Sorry, I'm here. Uh, Horace, uh, I guess what – uh, did you ever think you could play with uh, Bryce and Sean again? And, you know, what's it going to be like to, to wear orange and blue? And is that, is that special to you? To be honest with you, I think anything is possible because when I went to Argentina, I played with my teammate, Laron Smith, again from back when I was a junior. I mean, sophomore in high school, sophomore in college, excuse me. So, like, I feel like me be playing with Bryce and Sean right now is probably just meant to happen because it already started with Laron And Laron just brought everybody together again. So it feels kind of good. It feels kind of cool just to have the opportunity to play with my teammates again. You mentioned that exposure that this tournament could have with everybody watching. Um, coming back from Argentina, you know, what do you think this could do for, you know, your pro opportunities in the future? Honestly, I'm just taking it one step at a time. You know what I'm saying? Everybody been on, on quarantine isolation for three months, so I'm trying to see how everybody's going to come out of play. I know me personally, I'm, I'm pretty good because my most my main focus is defense and rebounding. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I need to do for myself and to help my team win. That, that's my role, so I know what to do for me, so I know how to gauge how often I need to play. Thanks, Lars. Next question here is for, from Andrew. Go ahead, Andrew. What's it like to be playing uh, under the, the War Eagle concept on your team name, but at the same time, it's also a mixture of, you know, where you are now in, uh, in you know, Tampa? It feels good to have the, just the Auburn flavor to it, you know what I'm saying? Just had an Auburn fan base behind us, knowing that they're back to their chairs on. And they're not going to be in the building, still can feel the love. It just a, it's a home feeling for me. And I know it's a home feeling for Bryson and Sean as well, just to have the colors on us. Like, it's back, back home, back playing for Auburn almost. You know what I'm saying? It just feels good to have that Auburn flavor to us again. How competitive have the practices been between the Auburn guys and the Florida and the Florida guys, kind of an interstate rivalry going there? I mean, it's been very competitive, but I like it because it makes us want to just do better and get better every and, and during the practices. I practiced the first time yesterday, so I kind of felt a little – not tension, but I kind of felt the com competitiveness of, 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 of the team, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I can feel that we all want to win. So, it just makes everybody level play step up even more. Next question here from Gianna. Go ahead, Gianna. Hi. I was wondering, how have you grown or changed as a player since Auburn fans last got to see you play for Auburn? Uh, Bryce has said something that I agree with since I've played pro basketball. I think the game a lot more now. I'm not just trying to just play off my straight athleticism. You know, I'm trying to work hard, work smarter, not harder. And the fact that at Auburn, I wasn't really much of a scorer. I'm more of a potential threat now in the post. I, I can say that. And I'm more of a facilitator as well, trying to pass the ball outside the post to open shooters. So that's something that I can, I can say that I really worked on. But I'll have the ability to do as well prior to Auburn and in Auburn. But right now, I'll probably be a little more free in my game because I wasn't much as free in my game as at Auburn. Thank you. Question here from Jason Caldwell. Go ahead, Jason. Laura, say, man, you mentioned that time in Argentina. What was that like for you playing, um, you know, in Argentina and, and that style of basketball? You mentioned how it freed up your game some, but what was that time like for you? Argentina was really a learning curve for me, <clears throat> playing my first uh, pro basketball, mainly in a whole different country. So it was just a learning curve at first, and mainly in the preseason, I had to get accustomed to the basketball. But as, as time went on, I felt I really just dominated my role, dominated my position, and really dominated my team as well. So we had more of an opportunity for where just to win. And it taught me how to be a leader on both sides of the court as well, offense and defensively. So I just understand what, what – I need to do to get my teammates shots, what I need to do to get myself shot, what I need to do to get offensive rebounds, what, what position to be in. I was all taught all that stuff in college as well. Yeah, what was the what was the biggest learning curve for you living outside the United States like that? The biggest learning curve wasn't basketball. Like I want y'all to know <laughs> not basketball. The learning curve was learning the language, just trying to interact with people, trying to order their food, trying to learn where the bathroom's at, you know what I'm saying? That's the learning curve, trying to just be a regular person, not regular person, trying to integrate yourself into the society. That's the hardest part, you know what I'm saying? Trying to just be not a normal person, but normal enough to where you have a conversation with somebody. Thank you. 
So I'm like halfway full in Spanish. <laughs> Uh, Horace, obviously, you know, this is a great opportunity on ESPN, uh, national TV, nothing else happening here. Do you see this as a potential exposure event for your career to show, you know, teams overseas or even, you know, a state side, you know, what you can do and, and what you're capable of? I mean, it, it, it's real. I mean, everybody's going to be watching this like a magnifying glass. I feel like it's going to be really on this, this tournament to see what the old college prospects and now potential pro prospects have and seeing who come out this quarantine the best in shape, who came out the quarantine ready to play. Like that's that's what this this whole tournament gonna show. Like who was really working in the gym like that. Who had the opportunity to work in the gym like that's opportunity. And all gyms are open. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's just facts. Uh if if this things go well this year, obviously I imagine this team is probably going to try and integrate some Auburn guys going forward. Uh do you think this would be a, an opportunity, would be an opportunity to maybe bring TBT to Auburn, and how do you think the fans would react if there was interest in, in making that happen? That would be a big move, mainly for Auburn. That would be just another thing to make Auburn more popular. I feel like I like that. I guess it's a good idea for real to integrate more Auburn pros. I mean, not Auburn pros, but Auburn alumni into the TBT because I feel like it's just making it more a little bit exciting. You know what I mean? Uh, we'll take another question or two here for Horace if there's one out there. I see Jason has his hand raised. Jason, do you have a follow-up question or is your hand just still raised? It must have just been just raised. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, all right, no other questions here for Horace. Uh, do you have any parting thoughts? Any, any words you want to leave for Auburn fans before they see you play on Saturday? I'm glad to be back. War Eagle. All right. Thank you, Horace. <coughs> We're going to Fletcher McGee short. All right, Fletcher McGee here, not an Auburn player, but obviously someone who is the NCAA all-time leader and three-pointers made. Uh, just talk about, you know, joining TBT for the first time, uh, you know, playing on this team with some Auburn guys and uh, your chances in TBT. Yeah, you know, I'm really excited to be playing uh, in a tournament. It's my first time, um, you know, but I'm ready for, for the experience and everything that, you know, that it has here. Um, you know, I'm really excited to be playing with a lot of great players from Auburn, um, some other players from, from Florida that I know. So, um, yeah, just the whole experience, you know, I'm really excited about it. And uh, I think, you know, we have a really good team and, you know, we're going to have a chance to, to make a run and win this thing. Practicing, you know, with the team as a whole a little bit down in Florida and also getting with Horace and Bryce and those guys up here, uh, what, have, what have you seen from them so far? Uh, and how do you like your chances on Saturday? Yeah, um, you know, it was great to, to get down to Florida and um, – kind of get a little chemistry of some of the people on our team, you know, then getting up here and practicing with Bryce and Horace. Um, it was good to just see, you know, the way that Bryce shoots, you know, what he likes, um, you know, where he likes to shoot from, all those kind of things. Um, and then Horace, you know, just getting to see his motor, his energy, you know, his rebounding and defense. Um, so just knowing, you know, what, what everyone brings to the table, I feel like, you know, it's going to help us, you know, going forward. I think, you know, give us a great chance to win. First question here from Justin Lee. Go ahead, Justin. Fletcher, you mentioned Bryce. Uh, I asked him about you. I want to ask you about him. Um, I guess, you know, you've always been – I'm sure you've always been the best shooter on your team. You know, what's it like to kind of have two sharpshooters? Um, and what, what do you think that's going to be like on the court? Yeah, no, I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, whether one of us is playing point guard, you know, if we're both running the wings, you know, I feel like if we're both running, <laughs> if we're both running the wings, um, you know, I feel like – we have a ton of options, um, you know, just having two people that can really shoot the ball from anywhere. Um, you know, I was actually in here when you asked him about me. So, um, you know, like he said, like he can – he doesn't care if, if he's fading right or left or has a contest. Um, you know, same with me. We're, we're able to get our shot off um, a lot of times if there's good defense or not. So, I feel like it'll be really cool to have someone else like that to play against. Um, you know, hopefully we can get hot together and really strengthen threes again. 
we and we we t- we've talked about just kind of the exposure, how everybody's gonna be watching. Um, what do you think this opportunity can do for for you and and your future in basketball? Yeah, no, I think it's a great opportunity just because. You know, not many people have, you know, there's no really sports on TV. So I feel like anyone that's interested in basketball is going to be tuned in. Um, So you just have the opportunity to play against pros, um, to be on ESPN, you know, to really be able to show what you can do. I think it's something that a great opportunity for everyone. And I feel like I'm ready for it and I'm ready to show what I can do. Thanks, Fletcher. Fletcher, you actually had the opportunity to play with Mike Dom overseas in Spain this year, who you were going to see in your first game uh, on Saturday. Yeah. Have you guys spoken at all in, in the lead up to this game? Kind of, you know, what has the trash talking conversation yeah. been like? Yeah, we've been talking a little bit. Um, he actually FaceTimed me whenever like they released it, that we were both going to be playing each other. So we talked a little bit then, and we texted a little bit while we've both been up here. So, you know, I'm really excited to play him. I'm sure uh, he'll give his team a good sky report on me, and, you know, I'll try to give my team a good sky report on him. Um, but, you know, I think, like, we're both ready to play. Um, being overseas together, I feel like, um, you know, we had such a similar experience. I feel like it's prepared us really well for this and, you know, for basketball um, beyond this. So I'm really excited to see him, um, see how he plays, and, you know, hopefully we'll take him down though. What is the game plan for someone like him as well as that team as a whole? Um, we haven't really talked too much about the game plan yet. I feel like we'll probably get into that today and tomorrow. Um, but, you know, just to, you know, compete on both ends, not give up easy shots. You know, if you give pros easy baskets, you know, they're going to take advantage and make them. So I think that's, you know, our, one of our main things, um, you know, just to, you know, guard the three-point line and keep people out of the paint. I feel like that's kind of just overall, you know, a good game plan. So feel like we'll you know focus on those things you know as we get into the game for guys who are sort of joining alumni teams in this thing that didn't necessarily go to that school we call them grad transfers uh-huh. are you sort of feeling the love from the Auburn fan base as a whole right now yeah um on Twitter like we saw that there was a ton of um I think like for Tampa had like the most fans I feel like that's definitely because of the Auburn fan base so uh, when, like when they announced that I was playing for Tampa, I saw like a lot of the Auburn people like commenting and like tagging me and stuff. So I know that um, I did feel you know really accepted. And I feel like they're glad you know to have me on the team. So you know, hopefully I'll be able to show out and uh, make them proud. You and they already mentioned, but you and Bryce in the backcourt together has been real deadly. Have you talked to him a little bit at all? Are you pairing with him specifically, just kind of like running the show, kind of a little give and take there, sort of. You know, figuring out how to play with each other. Yeah. They're both like long range bombers. Uh huh. Yeah. So we were we were on the same team um, in practice yesterday, and we were playing pickup and stuff. So I feel like we got some good chemistry. Um, you know, when I drive and draw people, I'm gonna be looking for him to shoot. You know, he drives and draws people. Uh, he'll be looking for me to shoot. So, you know, I feel like you know having people that um, draw a lot of attention from the defense. I think that we can you know use that to our advantage to help our teammates, but also you know free each other up. Um, and get each other a good look. So, you know, I'm really excited to be playing with him and, you know, to see, you know, how we can play together and how we can both score and help our teammates. Question here from Patrick Graham. Go ahead, Patrick. Hey, Fletcher, how's it going? Not to cause division or anything, but if uh, you and Bryce uh, played a game of horse, who's winning? And if you guys get time, you guys should post one to Instagram so we can watch. (laughs) <laughs> um, I mean, of course, I got to say I'm going to win. I'm not going to go on and say that someone's going to beat me. Um, but, you know, I, I would be a really good game. I feel like, you know, he has crazy range. Um, it can hit really tough shots. So I feel like um, that would that is a good idea. If we have time at practice, maybe we can video a game and, um, you know, take some crazy shots and, you know, see if we can match each other. And um, But, yeah, that would be a lot of fun. But I got I to gotta go with myself. Yeah, we need some basketball in the sports world, so appreciate you. Oh, yeah, no, thank you. I'll let Fletcher go here in a second if there are no other questions. Uh, Fletcher, any sort of parting thoughts here on uh, what we can expect to, to see from you guys on Saturday and uh, your thoughts on, uh, you know, leading the tournament as a whole? Yeah, so I think what to expect from us, um, yeah, you know, we're going to play hard. We're going to give it our 100%. You know, we're going to run up and down the court, shoot a lot of threes, um, I think we're very versatile defensively. So, um, you know, we're going to get it up and down and, um, you know, really just give it all we got and, uh, you know, see if we can win and then see how the, the tournament continues to roll. All right. That will conclude. Oh, we have one more question. No question. Patrick. Patrick.
Patty, did you still have another question or is your hand raised? Oh, my fault. My hand was still up. <laughs> all right, just wanted to make sure. That will conclude media day for today for Lord Tampa. We appreciate all these guys' time. Uh, we'll be sending out an MP4 of uh, media day so you all can use it shortly. Thank you again, and uh, we'll all talk soon.